All right, so in the final part of the series, we're going to do some high cable variations. So uh, one of the things that we want to kind of talk about is also, again, so if I'm kind of pulling more on this angle here, uh, that's going to work a lot of upper traps, mid-back, upper back, maybe some rear delts. So we can kind of do with kind of our elbows out to the sides a little bit more kind of face pull or high type row variations. That's going to be one option. If I want to have, again, my elbows in a little bit more, kind of pulling in more towards this way. Uh, we can kind of emphasize the lats a little bit more, and especially if you use a single arm. So we're going to show some exercises with uh, a regular handle. This is a spreader bar, which is very accommodating. And also, we can kind of use one handle to really kind of think about bringing the elbow towards the rib cage, which is going to kind of work the lats a little bit more because that's kind of where they orient kind of more down and in. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the handles on the outside, open them, and then we're going to kind of the more we kind of spread it out this way. Good go it's gonna work a little bit more of the rear delt. So the more G gets his hand a little bit more out to the side, it's gonna be a little bit more of a rear delt emphasis, okay? Little. Yep. All right. So using this kind of high cable setup, uh, kind of having the cable oriented a little bit more like a 45 degree angle is gonna be good. And if you bring this kind of the elbows tucked in a little bit more, then face the palms facing each other, kind of in towards the body. So that's going to be more of like kind of a lap pull down motion. So this is a really nice setup, again, because sometimes it could be hard to uh, get in like a, a, your normal machines and things like that. You can kind of stay in the chair. Uh, this is something you could even set up at home if you had some weights and things like that. And if I wanted to uh, make this even more kind of accommodating and joint friendly, I can set this up with a single uh, cable attachment. And I can have a lot of different options here. But if specifically, if I want to work the, lat, the lats, I can kind of kind of rotate inward like this and drive my elbow in towards the sides. This might be a little heavy for single arm, but I, so he's driving his elbow. Good, feel the difference. I mean, you can really get this to stretch. We can line this up really nice. So they were trying to drive in this way on this angle. So down and in is going to really work the lats a little bit more. And then we're just going to do that on both sides. All right. And if I wanted to kind of again strap him in to give him a little bit more stability, so that way the, the weight's not kind of pulling him off out of the chair, we could do that as well. Or have even some weight on his thighs here. Nice. How's that feel? Feels good. Good. Well, that's just popping so up. So again, sure. absolutely. So that's going to work a little bit more of the lats because of the orientation of the movement. So we're kind of doing this kind of like pull in movement here. Excellent. So just in closing, uh, we want to talk about uh, when we look at the trunk and core training, we want to look at the, the transverse abdominis and the abdominal wall. You can look at the obliques. So the transverse abdominis is going to work, is help us brace as well as produce spinal flexion. And even like a small thing, spinal flexion is going to help us get off the bench in between attempts, which I think is of value. It helps us kind of get up and down off the floor and uh, just off, and off the bench itself. Spinal extension is going to help us hold the arch a little bit better, okay? So that's why we might want to do spinal extension. Uh, and both with the abdominals and the low back uh, and the lats, we're going to talk about the lats in a second, we can work those isometrically and dynamically. Dynamically, it's going to work more hypertrophy, more strength, and then the static movements are going to work more for stability. So we can kind of, kind of get the best of both worlds by adding pauses in the contracted position, as well as lowering slowly. And we can do adjust, sometimes do more error on the side of doing dynamic reps, other times uh, just doing longer holds. We talked about the plank variations, the anti-rotation holds for the obliques, because our spine doesn't really have a lot of capacity for rotary motion. That is one kind of example where I would probably just stick to just the static movements and not do like a lot of rotational movements, because that's gonna really put a lot of shear on the spine, which we don't want. Uh, in terms of the lats, we, we talked about rowing motions and pull down motions and shoulder extension as well as rear delt motions. All those are gonna have value, both dynamically and statically, but it's really important that you put a lot of emphasis on the upper back and on the lats and the rear delts because those are gonna provide a lot of stability so you can hold your shoulder blade position, cut down your range of motion. And ultimately, as you know in competition, the judges are looking for a nice level bar. So we wanna have stability, show stability on the way down. We wanna get the bar to have a clear stop and we wanna have stability as well on the way up. So if we can prevent rocking, if we can prevent um, prevent any unnecessary movement of the bar and allow it to settle that much quicker, you're going to be much more efficient at bench pressing.
how that feels, you? Felt good, felt good. So that's how we kind of approach core training in the terms of uh, any athlete. Uh, and then again, if, depending on what your limitations are or what your current situation is, ask yourself, what do you have in terms of range of motion? What can you own in that terms of range of motion? And what's, what can you tolerate? So in any of those movements, none of them, they might have been uncomfortable on the muscle, but none of them kind of cause joint pain or anything like that. So we want to make sure we eliminate joint pain and get the most muscle participation and activation as possible. So thank you guys for watching. If this uh, helped you, um, if, let, let us know. Uh, let us know if you have any questions on implementing with your training. And until next time, stay strong, and we'll see you soon.